while wearing a jacket, pants, boots and gloves designed specifically for motorcyclists will reduce injuries in the event of an accident, you most likely will not die from any body injuries received. It is head injuries which cause the most deaths to motorcycle riders. This is why the most important piece of protective gear is your helmet. But the number one thing which will save your life is skill. Too many times I see riders spend thousands of dollars on their motorcycle, a significant amount of money on protective gear, but they invest nothing in themselves. You need skill to ride a motorcycle safely, and the best way to obtain these potential life-saving skills is with rider training. No matter how old you are, nobody knows it all. There is always something to learn. The best place to learn to ride a motorcycle is on the dirt, as this is where you learn the necessary skills to control a motorcycle. When you're out on the road and something goes wrong, you will not have the time to analyse the situation or even think about what you need to do. It needs to be a gut or instinct reaction. Just use as many fingers as you need for any given situation. There are no rules. You can use two, three, or even four fingers. It's totally up to you. However, some bikes may have a weak front brake, so you may need to use all your fingers just to get enough braking force to stop in time. I'm not going to get too much into this one, as there are plenty of videos on YouTube about a technique which is called trail braking. And every rider should use this technique. Without doubt, it is absolutely the safest way to corner. I've been doing this my whole life, and until recently I didn't even know it had a name. For starters, I'm quite sure there are many female riders who can ride a motorcycle much better than a man, like Dasha for example. You would need to spend a significant amount of money on one of the bigger Harleys to get them to go as quick as a standard 1200cc Sportster. And considering an Indian chief doesn't even make 80 horsepower, and the scout has 100 horsepower, if your girlfriend or wife rides a scout, she can kick your ass. Back in the old days, most motorcycles came with just a solo seat, but as an accessory, a pillion pad was available. The pillion is actually the seat that your passenger sits on. Your riding partner is your pillion passenger, or just your passenger. Most bikes these days have a dual seat. As long as you are a skilled rider, you are not more likely to have an accident riding a motorcycle as compared to driving a car. But if you do have an accident, you are much more likely to suffer serious injury or even death. Motorcycle boots are designed specifically for motorcyclists and they should not have laces unless they have a special covering to go over the laces or they lace up very high on your leg and your trousers cover the loops 100% of the time. Laces can and do get hooked up on gear levers or foot pegs. Good luck trying to put your foot down at the lights if this happens. Motorcycle rims are made to have specific size tyres fitted. If you fit a tyre which is too wide for your rim, it will change the curvature of your tyre, and you will in fact have less grip, not more. This subject is covered in detail in a separate video on the channel. You should develop a feel for your motorcycle's engine. You don't need a taco to tell you when to change gears. Try covering up your taco, then going for a ride, and then just riding by feel. You're either in the rev range where your particular motorcycle performs the best, or you're not. You might surprise yourself as to just how smooth the gear changes are.
Use whatever octane fuel that is recommended by your bike's manufacturer, as it is this octane what your bike was made for and tuned for. There is no advantage to using a higher octane fuel. DuPont Motors took control over Indian in the 1930s, and Paul DuPont had control for two decades. So for anyone to say that the new Indians are not real Indians but are Polaris instead, is like saying a classic 1930s or 40s Indian chief is a DuPont. Polaris is just the parent company and the owner of Indian motorcycles. Just as Ducati is owned by Volkswagen, Fiat used to own Ferrari, Mini is owned by BMW, and both Aprilia and Moto Guzzi are owned by Piaggio. While some parts may be made overseas, the bikes are in fact made in the USA. Polaris's headquarters are in the USA, and the company that owns Polaris, Textron, is also based in the USA, meaning this is definitely a real Indian motorcycle. ABS brakes do in fact reduce braking distances in emergency situations and in slippery conditions. However, if you've only ever ridden a bike that has ABS, how are you going to get on if the ABS fails? Or if you ride a bike without ABS? ABS is similar to all these different power modes and traction control that some bikes have nowadays, in that they won't help to improve your basic skill levels. In my opinion, and I admit that I am old school, all of these electronics are just something extra which can go wrong. Electronic wizardry should be a choice and not forced upon every rider. Some riders may need it, but others may not. This is the most bizarre myth of them all. Some riders believe that because these chains are sealed with lube inside, that there is no reason to lube the outside. But there is still metal on metal contact between the chain rollers and the sprocket teeth. And unless the o-rings are kept moist, they will harden and crack. I'm not aware of any motorcycle chain manufacturer that doesn't recommend lubing the chain and sprockets. So if you still think you don't need to apply lubrication to your chain, you probably shouldn't even be riding a motorcycle. <laughs>